Today we'll be reading Numbers 33, verses 48 and 49. Numbers 33, 48 and 49. Vayisu mihare ha'avarim v'yachanu be'arvot mo'av Al Yarden Yericho, Yachanu, Al Hayarden, Mi Bet Ha Yeshimat, Ad Avel Hashitim, the Arvot Moab. And they journeyed from the mountains of Abarim and pitched in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. And they pitched by the Jordan from Beth Jeshimot even unto Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. Okay, let's say this together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher her alanu rachamim beyeshua Vanatan lanu brit chadasha, Baruchata Adonai, not ten hamashiach. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who showed us mercy in Yeshua and gave us a new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Messiah. Amen. Please be seated. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. This morning's Torah portion, as you've just heard, Rick, um, I've known you for 50 years and I have a senior moment. Cowan. Robin Cowan, thank you. As you just said, we have known each other for 50 years. Um, she doesn't look that old, but I do. <laughs> At any rate, um, this morning's Torah portion that they read is from Numbers. It's the last seven chapters of Numbers, um, all the way to the end of the book. Our half Torah, our reading from the prophets, is from Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, chapters 1 through 3. And our Brit Harashah, our reading from the Apostolic Scriptures, is from Yaakov, James, chapter 4. As Rick and Robin have just read from this morning's story portion, Israel has now returned and stands east of the Jordan River, looking across the river at the Promised Land. For 40 years, they've been banished by God to wander in the wilderness because they had not trusted God to lead them victorious into Canaan. Israel is now camped in Acacia Grove, across the Jordan River from Jericho in the land of Moab, a nation which is aligned with the Midianites. Let me continue to set the scene with a paraphrase of Moshe's proclamation to God's chosen people, the nomadic Israelites. Children of Israel, now this is a paraphrase. Children of Israel, hear this proclamation. This is your situation, your challenge, as you prepare to enter the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey that was promised to you by Adonai, by your, to your great patriarch fathers. You are a sinful people. You have allowed yourselves to be seduced by the Midianites into idol worship and sexual immorality. You have denied your God, intermarried with Midianite daughters, absorbed the worst aspects of their culture, that culture of sin, and allowed God's chosen people to become assimilated into the profligate Medianite nation. Yet while it is true that you have been a sinful people, still your God is going to keep his covenant promises to you. Here now, therefore, as I prepare you to enter the promised land, when the world cannot eliminate the elect, through direct conflict, 
It often tries to neutralize them by absorbing them into the world. This is kind of a theme of today's Midrash. The Midianites knew this. They had recognized that the vast throngs of the people and the armies of Israel would easily overwhelm them. So they tried three times, all unsuccessfully, as we've heard in the last uh, three um, Shabbats, um, unsuccessfully to have the pagan prophet Baalam curse Israel. Baalam was thwarted in all three of these attempts by the God of Israel protecting his people and refusing to have them cursed. In today's Torah portion, as God prepares his people to enter the promised land, Moshe instructs Israel on how they must necessarily clean up their act with the Midianites and with all of their sins. To be victorious and conquer the land, they must return to seeking, honoring, honoring and trusting their God. His instructions emphasize the requirements on worship, on offerings, on laws of morality, and then continue regarding regular sacrifice and celebrations. Moshe shows clearly how Israelite life in the land must revolve around the worship and the service of the Lord. These were the commandments and judgments which the Lord commanded the children of Israel by the hand of Moshe on the plains of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho as they prepared to enter and conquer the promised land. Numbers is a very exciting book, but it is not simply a nice, exciting history. How does it apply to us today in our nation, right now, here at Big Tikva this morning? Let me ask you a challenging question. Is God speaking here in these passages only to Israel? Or is God also speaking to us today? To our nation, to the church, to the congregations, and to each of us here in Congregation Beit Tikva, attending alive and online. I'll start by repeating a few words I've already spoken. When the world cannot eliminate the elect through direct conflict, it often tries to neutralize them by absorbing them into the world. Think of the world as our contemporary culture with its steep slope erosion of morality its denial of what is true, proclaiming as true what is actually false. The substitution of worship of the true God with the false idols of security, possessions, popularity, beauty, and youth. Look at the decline of the church and synagogue attendance, the growing anti-Semitic persecutions, the unfortunate but sadly true post-Christian characterization of our culture. How are we then to respond to all of this? It's pretty overwhelming. It's so easy for us to be seduced by the temptation to avoid appearing judgmental, to not make waves, to hunker down and avoid confrontation, to go with the flow and blend in. So that leads to another question each of us must answer for ourselves individually. Are we allowing ourselves to blend into our declining culture? like Israel just blending in with the Midianites? Are we a friend of the world, or are we friends of our Savior Yeshua? The prophet Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah in today's half Torah portion um, from the prophets, proclaims, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all of their wickedness, because they have forsaken me, burned incense to other gods, and worshiped the works of their own hands. Yaakov, James, charges us in this morning's reading from the Berit HaRashah, the Apostolic Scriptures, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend on your own pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes him for himself an enemy of God. While Israel today, um, excuse me, while Israel was seeking entry into its promised land, we today already live in our promised land, founded 247 years ago by Christians seeking freedom of worship and formalized by visionary founding fathers into a guiding constitution 
that enshrines and protects the God-given rights of all mankind. Amen. Today, we may well be in danger of losing everything that God has given us. Our promised land is being seduced by those who deny God. We must ask ourselves, therefore, are we being individually, each one of us, passively or even willingly seduced to live the ways of our culture? Do we dare, therefore, not to make waves? Do we dare to hunker down and avoid confrontation? Do we dare to go with the flow or just blend in? No. no. God has shown us that our future in this promised land requires us to boldly turn away from our contemporary wilderness to restore our lives to revolving around the worship and the service of our Lord, to lead others to the saving salvation of our Lord Yeshua, and to pray, pray, pray. God blessed Israel as they sought, obeyed, served, and followed him, and he will do the same for us as we serve, follow, and proclaim him. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and saving God. Amen.